his answers. I'm going to put this on extremely double time speed. She got one of the craziest pyramid schemes. I'm going to put that on for next time because I want to see what she's talking about. Like, what is it really a scheme, though? Did niggas really get scammed? Like, who knows? I got it on double time speed. We'll be through it in, like, 20 minutes, probably. This nigga got a suit on and you got a weird haircut. Like, come on. Are men to be... <laughs> Somebody called me a beta. I got to learn how to become alpha. No, it, it's no, it's really no choice. Be the stable ones. Men don't need to be crying in front of women. And ideally, they're not splitting chores. And I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I don't. I think that if a woman cannot look up to you in some way, then she cannot respect you. And if she cannot respect you, she cannot love you. I totally disagree. Totally I, I totally agree. Totally disagree. <laughs> oh great, it's the it's the alpha niggas. Wait. Let's say the death notice existed and there was a person like Light who killed off only criminals. Would you support? No. I feel like we get into muddy waters with that type of person very, very quickly. Like very, very quickly. All the power being in that one person's hands, unregulated, and they get to do whatever the fuck they want to whoever they want, based off whatever they deem worthy of death for each crime? I don't think so. That's not a good idea. Wouldn't support it. Step forward if you agree with the prompt. Men are designed to want to sleep with multiple women. Ha <laughs> ha. This is my type of question. Shut up, Nick. No, I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. Oh, God. Yeah, I would say um, I definitely agree that. Uh, okay, but what if you gay? Don't that nullify the whole question? Uh, men, you know, want to sleep with multiple women. I think it's natural because uh, one of the things are is because we, you know, we have so much sperm. <laughs> and that we, you know, we produce so much sperm and that makes us want to repopulate the earth, basically. And so a lot of times what happens is, what? is I think that society <laughs> is telling men not to do that. For whatever reason you know what i mean and some some guys fall into that but i definitely believe that you know men actually want to be with multiple women because it's just a <laughs> natural thing this is why you hear all the time you know men always cheating and this nigga said this nigga her yeah we got millions of sperm cells that must mean we must get millions of bitches like, i feel like they you know trying to hide the cheating and everything like that and if it was natural for them to just want to be with that one woman then cheating wouldn't even be an issue you know what i'm saying so that, that's how i look at it yeah i think uh for the way we were cultured, I agree with that, but also to just through human history, right? For survival, you, I mean, maybe this is old school thinking, but it's just like for survival, you need to have lots of kids. Mm -hmm. So someone's pregnant, how do you keep multiplying? You just, more women, right? right? Not saying it's right or wrong, but it's just kind of the way, I think women even cheat too. It's like 50-50. Yeah, I think women will. Evolutionarily speaking, well, if we talking about evolutionary, I, I think it this should be changed to men are designed to need to sleep with multiple women, but that's not even true. That's not even true, bro. Also, some, you know, want to do their thing, you know what I'm saying, in some situations, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's just, I mean, I think it's a natural, like, I feel like because that desire is born in like an hour. It's, it's a natural thing for, you know, if we're talking specifically men, that desire to want to do it is natural in us, so then therefore you're going to want to do it. So I don't think it's, a, you know, a natural thing to just be with this one woman but at the same time when i'm with this one woman i only want to stay with her it's almost like i'm lying to myself if i just want to be with her you know what i mean yeah i mean that makes perfect sense bro my boy i'm sorry i'm sorry looking at your chemical makeup i'm gonna go ahead and assume that you'd be lucky to get one i'm gonna be honest with you okay i don't think i don't understand about everybody that want to be alpha you don't even have that many women breaking down your door to talk to you so like why wouldn't you just choose one and just have a lot of kids with one. Like, this would make more sense if you'd be like, you know what, men are designed to, to procreate, blah, 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 but you find, like, one partner or whatever. I don't get where the multiple women thing comes into play for, like, spreading your DNA. Wouldn't you be able to just have a whole bunch of kids with one woman? It's like I'm lying to myself if I just want to be with her, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that makes perfect sense. But the question is, is, is that the end point? is being with multiple women, the end point. I'm of the firm belief that it is important to position yourself as a man to have the capacity to be with as many women as you possibly can and position yourself in a way where you understand your <laughs> nature and you maximize your potential as a man. And that's where I don't necessarily agree that just because there's a deeper desire to continue to do it means it's going to be the most optimal thing for you and your own 
ability to thrive at the highest level and connect with God here on earth. I was taught not to be with multiple women, right? right? But it's like, especially, I mean, here's the thing, especially when you're in a relationship, right? It's like, it's better to grow together with somebody than multiple people, which I totally agree. But I think in the dating terms, it's like, there's nothing wrong with being multiple women. Uh, because I think that's just dating. It's experimenting. It's finding other people. But are we naturally made? I'm not saying I agree with the premise or notion, but that's what drives men to want to sleep with and procreate with multiple women. Don't fight me, though. I mean, I just don't think that's a good, you know. I mean, I get that you're saying you disagree with it, maybe, but you're, you're trying to, like, rationalize it. It's just not productive. You can't be a father to every person that you you know, bring into the world when you have a kid with every woman that you sleep with. That's just stupid. I would think that alpha niggas would understand that. If you want to be a quote-unquote true alpha, wouldn't you need a quote-unquote father? And if he's not there because he's busy procreating with everybody else, like, doesn't that kind of nullify his alphaness if he's, in, uh, like, unable to be a father? To just always be with one person? It's like, if that were true, then these first thoughts of being with another woman, even though I'm in a committed relationship, would never occur. But it comes up once right. in a while. But it doesn't mean I'm acting upon it. So and you are, might be being generous about saying once in a while. It probably comes up quite a bit. Well, uh, it depends what kind of relationship. This suit is crazy, bro. This is the biggest monkey suit I've ever seen in my life. I, I just could not take somebody serious dressed like this unironically to have a discussion. Like my man's got almost a full blown, like a full blown tux to talk to other niggas about alpha and beta. Like, why are you dressed like this, gang? So how how good of a day it is, right? Like <laughs> that's what I'm I saying. Say, why your chest out, bro? Hey, for me, if it was totally Ain't natural, but niggas in here. I was natured, nurtured, and don't only be with one woman, that these thoughts wouldn't occur then. Right, and th the thing with me, I'm you know I'm non monogamous, so I have I have a wife, I have a girlfriend, and I still you know from time to time hook up with other girls. <laughs> you know what I mean, and so. And the thing is, it's it it feels regular to me. It doesn't feel like I'm trying to do it or 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 doing it because I'm forcing myself. It just feels just natural, like it's something I want to do. You know what I mean? And so to not do it feels unnatural. You might just want the moment <laughs> for a relationship. I I can understand that, but sexually though, I I think it's all BS. Yeah, I agree. I, I think a man can absolutely be head over heels in love with a woman and still sleep with other women and it not mean anything to him. Right. And I think all men have the proclivity to want to sleep with other women. Now, whether they're able to speak to that and actually act on that or not, or if they've been able to, like like you said, like religiously find a way to work around it. And I think religion has been great for that because if it weren't for religion, we probably would not have society. But I think what's most important to identify is that a man should create choice in his life. I don't think he's lying about that. No, I just don't think I think it's an irrelevant point to 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 kind of explore. That's all. And if you have choice, you should be able to do as you wish, particularly like in your case. Like whatever works in your relationship is fine. Like I, I don't, I wouldn't give a shit about that. It's like in my case. I think he's right. You can. If there's no deceit. Exactly. It's the lying. That, in my opinion, is actually the overall problem when, get, when guys, you know, tend to go outside of a relationship. They lie to the woman. That's the problem. So when I was growing up, I was under the belief of just being with one woman, right? Like I was a virgin for a very long time. Then one girl broke my heart. So that caused like a lot of insecurity, resentment towards the other side, right? And then I just became like a man whore for a little bit. The problem is you have guys who are monogamous, but they're monogamous because they're forced to be monogamous in a way meaning that they have no choice because they don't have the skill to attract multiple women. That's not the fucking reason. A lot of niggas is just cowards and they don't know how to tell their woman, you know what? I want to be with you, you, her, her, you, her, you, your friend, your mom, your sister, your cousin. I want to be with all these people at the same time and still love you, too. Um, can I do it? And a lot of niggas won't ask. They just won't be in that situation. Now, I'm not saying that'll work out nine times out of ten, but he acting like they ain't got a choice. They just liars and they cowards and they and they scared to say, like, yo, I want to try this out. Sometimes you're going to say, sometimes you'll hear a yes, sometimes you're going to hear a no. And if you one of the niggas that's, is going to be a no and you, you feel like the relationship's still worth it, then be with that one woman. If not, then go explore the world. And a lot of times they'll use that as virtue signaling. I would never do such a thing. Well, actually, bro, you can't. All right. But they make it seem like you can't. Like, it's hard to get a girl. Like, it's not, bro. Like, these niggas just... I don't like that. Can the disagree a step forward? I remember when I would, like, go on tour and things like that. My friends would always try to encourage me to, like, hook up with girls that were on to me. Bro, what <laughs> is the... 
I need you to explain to me what this aesthetic is. Did I even see you approach? Hold on, bro. What were you just wearing? I remember when I would like go on tour and things like that. What is your band name? Yeah. I like give me a 360. I need to Friends see the whole thing. Encourage me to like. <laughs> I love how they have them listed as a beta. Hook up with girls that were on to me, but I wasn't really like into it. And why are you talking it like made that? Made me feel like weird, like off, like there was something wrong with. Me. And now I'm at a point in my life where I feel like I'm only having sex with multiple women. So I'm not weird. So I'm quote unquote normal. I feel like even when I do have sex with these random women, it doesn't give me any gratification. And I know that comes with like random sex at, in, the, in the end. This sounds like the biggest fuck nigga of all time. <laughs> but I know in the back of my mind that like, I just like simply don't enjoy this. Like I've been with multiple women and I feel bad for me cause I'm getting so much pussy. Oh my God, I need help. Been with one woman and the being with one woman is just about, so peaceful. Bro. As far as like telling young men that they're born this way and that they should feel this way, it can really not do damage, but just sort of make you second guess things about yourself. Am I normal? Am I weird? Is there something off about me? Everyone else around me is saying that I have to feel this way or I have to do these things, but yet I don't feel the courage to do those things. I would say that's not true though. I don't think that we should promote men sleep with multiple women. I think that we should promote choice and what feels right to you. So in your particular case, I would never tell you to sleep with multiple women. I think you might be doing the right thing to do exactly what you're doing and not do it or stop doing it. It's not about pushing it on the young men, but I'll tell you, there's a lot of young men that have a demon inside and maybe are really upset and frustrated with themselves because they feel a certain way. And it's like, oh, I'm coming out the closet. I'm straight, you know, or, or super straight or too straight or whatever it is. I think that it's really gonna be about choice, man. So a demon? Me to you, I tell you, if that you don't feel good doing that, man, I wouldn't do it at all. Yeah, I, I agree. In your situation, well, what, what was happening, and this is what I think a lot of times what happens is you have guys who will have sex with multiple women because they're trying to fill a void. Right. So it shouldn't be about filling a void. It should be about you actually desiring. So you don't desire to do it, so which is why you shouldn't do it. But there are guys who desire to do it, but then they're suppressing their desire this and then it's slash doing the same the thing, thing as you not wanting to, to do it. Of course. I feel it's to appeal to an agenda without understanding basic social issues amongst men and women. Just be an adult and communicate with the woman what you want. It's simple, but people overlook that. Well, people are also choosing which parts of like the animal kingdom to adopt or not, because like if they did, they'd realize like it can only really be one alpha in the room. Like, if you really want to be animalistic about all of all of this, like, bro, then everybody take off your clothes, go out in the fucking wilderness, see who can be the bear, who can be the beast, see who can, like, garner the most food. Like, there are ways to prove who is the upper echelon of the men in this room. But y'all are picking and choosing, like, which versions of it to abide by and which ones to not abide by. And then still trying to call people alpha and beta based off of uh, your understanding of what it is. Just apply it apply it apply it fully with like they feel if that's how you're gonna be about it or just don't apply it at all that's how i feel they feel weird about not doing it but they want to whereas you felt weird doing it but you didn't want to i think it's a society thing me, like for you me, just said who's making them feel guilty about not doing it other men the reason i think women and men the question was do you feel that men are meant to sleep with multiple women or they just you know that's what they do and i don't think that's true I think it's a part of your character and which who you are. I do believe that if you say, if you're gonna be honest with your partner, your partner is into it, but do I believe that we are biologically meant and it's in our head because- I ain't gonna lie, I like his drip, but it's very much like 65 year old, I'm not gonna say it. We have to procreate and this and that. I don't believe that. I believe the reason we do it a lot is because it's, it's looked upon as a great thing for men to have multiple women. Women are shamed for that. I'm a chill. Shamed totally. I have one son and two daughters, and I know the difference of how I felt. I'm a chill. When they were 15, they're in their 20s, now they were 15, versus him having multiple partners or my daughter. So if I, if I could stroke a check for a million bucks and never feel that feeling again, I absolutely would. I really, really would. It's if something could, that what? I thought. Multiple partners or my daughter. So if I, if I could stroke a check for a million bucks and never feel that feeling again, I absolutely would. I really, really would. It's something that I really hated myself for, and I felt very apart. I grew up in the South, South Louisiana, I was a Bible Belt, and I felt very distant from people around me because I had this urge in me and could not understand why I was so different. Like The biggest self-hate I've ever felt in my life is over this particular subject. I thought I was broken. And, and I understand you, and me, I... 
Wait, is he saying that he felt different because he wanted to fuck a lot of women? I don't know what stroking the check means. Like, how are you saying you feel different? You felt ostracized. I get what he's saying socially, I guess. But you also in the same breath of saying, but we're designed to want to sleep with multiple women. So how are you different if you're saying that you're doing what you think is the norm? Maybe societally speaking, he feels like he's ostracized. But I, I mean, if you really believe what you believe, then like you just doing what's normal to you. But right again, I'm going to come back with, you know, just being around it. And me, I'm bisexual. I've always have been. But like you heard me say, I've been married to a woman for 30 years. Okay. And I've been committed for 30 years. Okay. Doesn't that I don't have that desire. It's my character to say, this is my person. And that's who I want to be with. So now that's you're, what you're I, right. The character well, versus is the drive. I was going right. to say. Then that goes back to, oh, we just built that way. Because if we're just built that way as men, then there's multiple people that I'm going to want to sleep with. But I think what I was under the impression with that question was, are we biologically DNA right. created yes. for that? Right. I say... Yes, but I love and I agree with what we're saying here. It's like, but as men, right, mm -hmm. in the culture and awareness and being a human being, having a consciousness, choice, language, we can choose not to. We can go against those desires or urges and stuff. If you feel that desire and you're honest with your partner, I believe that is true. Do I believe that we are biologically meant to, we just biologically want to sleep with more people because we have a penis between our legs and not a vagina? I don't. Well, let me ask you this, though, because you said you're bisexual. So does that means you're attracted to men and women, right? So if you're with a woman. No, my brother, you're not attracted to you. you that's not going to get that's not going to be your like it's not going to be your introduction to the ding dong train. All right. Relax. Bro got excited as hell. Like, no, he's not going with you at the end of this like little shindig right now, my brother. Stop it. Well, aren't you also attracted to men? So wouldn't you want a man and a woman? No. So you just. No. What 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 line of questioning is this? It's like I just want one, and that's um, I made a commitment, mm. and it's not even like I'm. But there's no a, urge to there's, want. There's always an urge. That, that's that's what I'm. That's, 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 that's what we're talking that's about. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I'm biologically. I think men and women both have urges. Where do you think the urge is coming from, though? If it's not biologically inside of you, I think the urge comes from. I don't think it's a biological thing. I, I think we. Not urge. I think but the urge creates tem temptation, no? But is temptation bad? Like you say it in a way that's kind of like temptation. No, I don't think temptation is bad. Natural. I don't think it's a thing of all, then that goes back to all of us then. All of us are, are meant to sleep with multiple people. So right. then that's just a whole different society thing. But it's not just, the question was as, as men, are we? And I don't think so. But regardless, I think it's important to understand, cause I, I think we are. And if we can come to terms with that, we can begin to move past it if that's what we desire. But, but if we reject that idea that it's not natural, then we can't move past it if that's something that someone wants to do. But bro, it don't matter if it's natural or not. Just get in a relationship with someone who's okay with it or not and move the fuck on. Like, why are you so obsessed about whether or not it's in your genes or your, your, your pool? If you have a conscious decision to say yes or no to every person that you encounter that you can sleep with, just make sure the person that you want to be with is okay with it. That's it. You're like like trying to wrap your head around like, oh, if I can blame this on something, then like then everybody has to accept it. Even if you could blame it on something, it's it's still a ton of people and a ton of partners that wouldn't give a fuck and would still tell you, no, I'm not okay with that. Do you agree it's just men? Do you agree with that statement that it's just men? No, I think it's women too. Okay. I, That's I, where I yeah. disagree. Oh, no, because we were just talking men. Right. But I, I agree that it's men and women. What it sounded like was, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, people started talking about like infidelity and, you know, telling the truth. And I think like the urges Where did this nigga come from? are okay until you act upon it. Um, and that's when both adults just have to have a conversation about, you know, this isn't working out for me. I still want to, you know, s sleep around or whatever you want to call it. It sounds like some people want to have their cake and eat it too which I don't necessarily agree with, but I think just as long as all parties and I swear to God, he has not been there this whole time. Into, I, I don't That is it. crazy. I mean, honestly, I, I don't think I could say it any better than he did. Um, that Another nigga, I, I have like never seen him before. All of us kind of agree upon that. It, in the end, it, it is a choice that like, if you want just to be spawn in a company, in. like a relationship, that's fine, as long as there was an agreement. Obviously don't, you know, 
be in a monogamous, monogamous relationship. And oh, then, God, you know, he's stuttering. Oh, like, no, single he's a beta. To, you know, no. sleep with a woman without telling your partner. Like, that's when, like, issues arise. He's Hi, this is Rodney, the director of this episode. No. You can now stream your favorite episodes of Middle Ground on Spotify whenever you like. Please like this video if you enjoy watching it and subscribe to our channel. Now, let's get back to the video. Submissive women are more attractive than dominating women. This is once again a pure case of preference. Oh, hell yeah. You know, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, bro. I like dominating. I like dominating women. I ain't gonna lie. Hell yeah. Listen, my, my shirt says submissive women are sexy. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, it's true, man. It's true. And look, I, I, she kinda, I think one of the most beautiful yeah, things about love has been able to fully take care of a woman in every way, whether that's emotionally protecting, providing. Ain't nothing wrong with submissive or, or dominating. I just don't think it's like, it's not productive to compare the two because they're both great in their own way. I think everything about that, like every fairy tale that was ever written for all of time was about a man saving a woman from a castle and a dragon, right? Oh my or God. Or some sort of scenario like that. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. You need a woman to rely on you so bad to fulfill this like desperate need to live or like breathe. Like how do you be in a relationship where the person is so dependent on you that you literally like their your every move they have to like be dependent upon? Like how would that be attractive to be in a relate you don't want a you don't want a relationship, bro. You want a daughter. That's all these niggas who like, like, oh my God, I need submissiveness constantly. I need someone to depend on me, to rely on me. Like, bro, this is not what you want. I don't think it is. And I have nothing against women being empowered, but I do feel like the happiest women in the world are the ones that look up to a man and that he oh. can fight every day to love her and love his kids and his family and provide and, and be that source of something to actually look up to. Uh, like, you're I so believe boring. a woman can admire a man and it's very, very, very healthy. Am I saying that somebody that doesn't do that is not a man? No, I would never. But ideally, the relationships that are going to work, the relationships in, let's say, the 30s, 40s, 50s, or or whenever, you know, we're, we were having... The 30s! <laughs> I can't imagine what niggas was doing to their wives in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. Bleed, Jesus. Did their families stay together before we went off the gold standard and inflation pushed everybody to have... Oh, people have my to have a God! Job? Yeah, dude, I do. I think those relationships were much happier when the man could lead a house and be proud of going out and going to work every day and fighting for his family. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, fighting his family. <laughs> Niggas be rewriting history like constantly. It's so amazing. Like, what part of the book did you read? I, I, I think what we have to do is we have to look at general female happiness because that's really what I'm into. Like, I don't really care what guys think or what girls think. I think I have a unique perspective in that I've worked with a lot of high performing women that operate in this dominant role. And I work with them for the purpose of helping them be able to reintegrate with that more submissive, uh, connected, intuitive part of themselves that really is connected to their bodies, that if they were connected to their bodies, wouldn't be as dominant, at least in the presence of men. And with every woman that I've worked with, there is this deep, deep, deep desire, regardless of what she says externally, to submit to the leadership of a man that she knows can properly hold down the emotional space and really put her interest at the forefront. Right. Wait till they find out that there are going to be situations and moments in the relationship where the woman submits to the man and the man submits to the woman. Wait till they find out it's going to be situations where you find out that your partner is better at something than you and you have to like go to them for something. It's a crazy ideology to even entertain but like Oh my God, I'm letting my woman lead me in this instance and it, it feels okay. It feels natural. It feels good. She's taking the reins on this. That's attractive, seeing people take a leadership position or role. Why like why would I want a woman constantly behind me all the time? But it's just like th this isn't even a world that they're willing to explore. Right, because as soon as when a woman is dominant over that man, she can't respect him. Oh, okay. Well, then that's the reason. That's the reason. It's crazy. Not she. Not she. Don't respect me. She got to be worse at me than everything. Because if she's better at anything, shh, fuck. Like what use are you as a man? Is this impossible? I guess you'll say right. Exactly. And, and and the thing is, the thing is with submission is like if you if you even look at the word submission, sub under. A mission. If I have a mission <laughs> and this woman is under my mission, meaning she is I'm leading her, right? Then that Yo, what is do a, they make these niggas, man? Good relationship that's gonna flourish. They really just Truly, do that? Deep down every woman would love nothing more <laughs> than to be 
more feminine in a role in a family and, and take oh, on that either that God. motherly role or that nurturing role or the really role that feels supportive Submission? to the overall mission of a man. It's just got to be a man worth getting behind. And weak men are the reason why Black this is a problem. Case in point, the whole you look at the time. workplace. You don't see women oh, applying for jobs man. to be power line guys or hang steel at steel companies. They're not picketing outside of the United States Army being like, why won't you draft me? Because they're male dominated spaces. What are you talking about? Most pe a lot of people don't feel safe in those environments. What are you saying? They don't want that smoke, bro. Like let's <laughs> let and that's okay. Right. And I can't I can't say enough. It's like as a man, like you get to take pride in taking care of a woman. Oh protecting my God. women. What about your daughters, man? You want to protect them, provide, care for them. That's okay. Let them be feminine. A strong man doesn't need you to be a man. He say, fine, you can be a woman. You're safe, sweet. Rory, that's what I'm saying. Like they don't know the feeling. Sweetheart, they don't come understand. With me. Right. That's it. Um, <clears throat> there was just a few things that I disagree on. Um, I think that in 2020, I told you you want a daughter. I think women just want to be able to look to the side and see their partner as an equal. And I think a lot of women now are, I don't think they're trying to be men. I think what they're realizing is that the qualities that they were looking for in men, they've always had it within themselves. If women are submissive, mm. it's mostly for, I I want to say, like, the validation for the man. I think they know in the back of their heads, like, they know now that they can do things on their own. But I don't think they necessarily need a man. But I think what they're looking for is that intimacy to have a partner. Like, bro, wouldn't it, as a, as a quote-unquote alpha male, make you feel so much better that a woman is choosing you because she wants to be with you? And not because she has to be with you or needs to be with you or or has to be dependent. Like, which would you prefer? Which would give you a, a bigger ego boost if this is what this is all about? How are you looking at these things and being like, I want her to basically I want to be a necessity to her as opposed to a desire? When like what can you rewrite this book that y'all are all like adhering to for no reason? But I don't think that they require one. Oh no, they do because uh, you know a, a lot of these girls they usually go. go home and cry at night from being lonely from not having a man. They have all these things and then they don't they're they're upset they don't have a man. You know what I mean? And I heard you say that you know women want to be the man's equal, but you you don't see and maybe this could just be a societal thing that a societal pressure, but you don't see women doing things that could make them equal to the men. You don't see the women approaching the men. You don't see the women paying for the dates. You don't see the women uh, being more assertive to the man. You see what I'm saying? So where's that? My brother is got, not huh? cooking. He is not in the kitchen. Since they got so much more. And wait, wait, wait. Let me go back through the list. Man, you don't see the women approaching the men. You don't see, you don't see the women approaching the men. That's a fucking lie. You see the women paying for the dates. You don't see women not paying for the dates. Another fucking lie. You see the women uh, being more assertive to the man. Bro, where? I know that there's a subset. I really don't know, to be honest. Like the, the type of woman that he's describing, I don't feel like. I'm not saying they don't exist, but I also feel like there's so many women that have shown that I have it, I'm willing to do it, and that's really it. Like, maybe the ones that you're getting, maybe that's why you have a, a, a wife, because she's dependent upon you. Like, I like I, I will be curious to understand or know, like, how you got your girlfriend and your wife and those other girls that you, like, court or whatever. Like, is that how you get them? By making them need you? You see what I'm saying? So where's that at? Because they got options. They got so much more options than well, that. I'll tell you what you do see. You see a high level of women on antidepressants more than ever, right? And I think that's a bunch of women trying to cope with trying to be like a man when One really... thing I will say, independency is important to being an adult and it goes for both men and women. Uh -huh. However, if either of them say I'm independent and don't need a man slash woman, it comes off as egotistical due to pushing a controversial idea. Do you agree or disagree? I I don't think it's controversial. I just think it's unnecessary. Like anybody that thinks if you're a man or a male in any capacity and you think that you don't need the, you know, uh, female species or whatnot, then you have lost the plot. And the same thing goes for the other way around. I think everybody needs each other to deny that is just or to act like one skill set that some typically have and some don't is superior or better when they're all like they're supposed to be used in conjunction with one another to make everybody's lives better. I just think you're losing the plot to compare them. Let me ask you a question. Are you more attracted to a woman that has a high paying job or to a woman's beauty? 
That doesn't matter. It's, it does matter. It does matter. No, it <laughs> does matter. You just made you. You're making him. You're making him care about what you care about. What? <laughs> you, you, you could. But I would like to say a mother figure rather than a woman. He like watched two YouTube videos about like men don't care about how much you make, and then just decided I'm gonna use this in a discussion. Absolutely not. But I would like to say that you're saying that women, you know, have a higher you know, have antidepressants, but men, um, I'm a social worker, so men, one out of 10, are more likely to, to experience depression, but more likely and to also undiagnose to, and not seek therapy or help. And also to actually go through with the, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I do think, and women also, you have to consider the fluctuation in hormones, pregnancy, because that can alter, you know, their mental health. So I think that's kind of a moot point, but I feel like, you know, I'm not looking for a mother figure, I'm looking for an equal. So. I feel like with, you know, if we're saying that women, you know, they're like going home crying, looking for men, I think it's also that societal pressure that tells you at the same time, you have to have multiple women. They're telling the women, you have to have that one man, that husband by a certain age, have kids by a certain age. There's more pressure on them than there is men. And for, you know, lack of a better term, I think men have gotten off a lot easier because women have so much pressure um and they get judged more harshly than men do for talking about back then when men used to go home bring home the bacon or whatever you know the the domestic violence rate was pretty high during that time and i'll also say that for people of color we never really had the luxury of working one job so my parents you know their parents before them everybody always had to work men and women so there was always that equal opportunity for them to be able to see that they could do it together as opposed to put that one pressure. And I also would like to ask if you guys find submissive women more attractive than dominant women, is that because it makes you feel more validated as a man? Or is there something there that you feel like feeds into your purpose as a man? That's really what it is. Like, unless she's submissive, I don't feel like I belong, which is so weird. Yeah, well, it's a balance. If I if I'm a dominant person, I need a submissive. If, if I meet a dominant woman, we're gonna butt heads. What? If, no, you're not. What if that changes? Like, what if she grows? Because I would I would love everybody to be able to grow throughout life. What if she starts becoming more dominant? Does that is that like a? Are you saying if she starts becoming more dominant in a relationship, more dominant or equal to your dominant? Oh yeah, she's gone. She's finished. See, we're done. And see, that's my thing. Like, look, I got children. I don't need somebody else to take care of. And I love your thing about, you know, the Prince Charming and everything. That's what I'm saying. He's saying the exact same thing, bro. They, they're they adding another daughter, bro. That's weird. But you know what I need? I need a badass woman who can match my badass energy. I, that was cringe, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You ain't getting no bitches with that line. But it's cool, though. I'm gonna let you spit because, like, I agree with you, Loki. But, like, yeah, I, like, it just, it, that's what it come down to, essentially. Work with my wife. And I'm gonna tell you, I take care of her. She takes care of me, and she's badass. And that's what I'm attracted to. Oh, you said to. it again. I don't need a submissive that I have someone to take care of. I get and, you. Then it's fine, you know. If she goes through that, but then I'll be there and I will take care of her. But I'm not looking for somebody, another child to take care of and have to dominate and touch. You go over there. This mm -hmm. is where we're gonna go to dinner. This is where we're gonna do that. Oh God. Now, that's why what he was saying. I was gonna bring that fact up too. Allowing them in a depressed because they put it on this shield. Oh God. I have to be the leader. I have to. Oh God. Oh God. Goes to get help first. Oh God. Women. Oh okay, God! That, that totally makes oh God! Facts on facts! Oh God! Sense. I think if we're talking about men not ever dealing with their emotions, it makes sense for this argument that you guys are talking about. But I'm with the firm believer. I have gotten a lot of therapy in my life. I've done a lot of things for myself personally. My brother said, "I prefer a submissive woman compared to dominant one." But at the same time, a woman will become submissive to you if she sees you as someone she wants to be with. That's not true. All the time, no. I just think Yo Sean, do you remember the Chris Benoit story? I don't think so. But I agree with you what you're saying, but like there's a lot of times where it's like she's going to be in a position that doesn't necessarily uh equate to submission and it's the best feeling in the world knowing that she might even, like I said, I'm not even one of those niggas that feel like, "Oh, you know, I got shows" cuz that's a lot of the times what these situations end up like giving into like oh okay who's the dude that i'm gonna end up choosing but it's just more like you're doing your thing and i see you doing your thing and you don't really you don't like i don't need to be around you know what i'm saying you calling me you 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 hitting me up you want to see me you want to do things with me and you got all these other things to do right now like that's that's a big that's a big thing i don't need to i don't need the submission in that i don't even see any submission in that i just see somebody that's just like 
I want to be around you. I want to be with you. Like, that's it. That's a great feeling. And my brother right here decided to say that. Let me go back and hear what he hey, said. You know who goes to get help first? Women. Okay, that I, that totally makes sense. I think if we're talking about men not How ever dealing with their emotions, be the it makes sense for this argument. We can be instead having these same dumbass convos about nothing. Because the, these convos are, are the basis for majority of, of our country. Like most niggas think like this. They do. You're still in the minority despite how much you might think it makes sense like most niggas think like. A lot of niggas think like this. That you guys are talking about. But I'm a firm believer I've gotten a lot of therapy in my life. I've done a lot of things for myself personally to resolve my own internal conflict. Right, and your story is anecdotal. Okay, so it's a job of out. Statistically speaking, most niggas do not get that type of mental uh, therapy. You know what else I heard too? I was talking to somebody who's a vet. I was talking to somebody um, and they were telling me about their time and like the PTSD. Like these niggas, the nigga was trauma dumping. He was trauma dumping crazy. And I was sitting up here talking to the nigga. I'm like, you know, a part, he was a serviceman. Like he was in the service or whatever. And I was speaking to him. I'm like, you're giving me a lot of information right now. Like, doesn't, doesn't the same government that you served when you was over there killing all them niggas in the other countries and whatnot, like, don't they pay for your therapy when you get back? Like, don't you, you know what I'm saying? Get like, uh, paid for healthcare or whatnot. Like they, they take care of you. Right. He like, yeah, they do. I'm like, well, why don't you go? Why don't you go, uh, to like, like some type of therapy or something like that. And the nigga said, no, But the whole time he's chatting to me about how hard it is being him. Like how difficult it is. Yeah, just an outright no. I don't know. I don't know if it's I don't know what he considers. I don't know if it's considered soft or not, but bro just says straight up no. But he still wanted to talk the whole time about being the victim, but didn't want to get help to get better. I give you an option to go get help. To go, you know what I'm saying? Get out of this situation, but you still want to be a victim. But you also don't want to get therapy. Like, who are you talking to, bro? I'm a grown ass nigga. I'm not about to sit up here and talk to you about this type of shit. I'm not a professional. Go talk to an expert. Seriously, though, I'm not saying it to be a dickhead. Like, you talking about PTSD and shit. Waking up in the middle of the night. You telling me no. What are you talking about? Alpha man, the real integrated alpha man has the capacity to understand what he's feeling. You can't be a victim and a hero. Is what I'm saying. Like, I, I just, I don't get that ideology, bro. The help is there for you, but you don't want to go get it. Why he's feeling the way that he is, articulate in a way that is productive to the dynamic. So a real man is someone that understands himself deeper at an emotional level, has taken the time to do that so he can show up as a rock, not so he can show up more emotionally. Problem is, is that if you're super emotional, when we talk about the whole thing of being submissive or dominant, your woman is going to dominate you because you're so emotional. Emotionally unstable. Yes. Let's say that. that it's emo- let's, let's stop using emotion. Let's start using emotionally unstable. Right. Since you're so emotionally unstable, she's going to dominate you, and then she's going to lose respect for you, and that's going to teeter to the waters of the relationship. So, I mean, you guys know dominatrix exists. I don't think anybody likes the nigga in the middle. Um, and by the way, I used to personal train at dominatrix. You guys are their clients. <laughs> um, not me, cowboy. I'm being serious. Like, it's a very hidden thing. I used to, I used to date them. <laughs> High positions of power, very alpha. But, like, here's the thing. I think you guys put a little bit too much pressure on yourselves. It might be a societal thing. I've dated submissive women before. I find them highly annoying. Sometimes I just want somebody to pick a choice. I like her places. She's got better taste than I do when it comes to that kind of stuff. So please go ahead. We do butt heads once in a while because she is dominant. But does that mean she lost respect or attraction for me? We have. No, not at all. And trust me on that one. So I think it does depend on your energy. You have a very high one, right? Maybe it doesn't mix well with somebody who also has a really high dominant energy. I'm not saying that's wrong because they exist for a reason, submissive people, right? But I just think... For me, when it's very submissive, I don't find that as sexy. I find that annoying. Mm-hmm. But see, that, and no, and, and that makes sense. And the reason, why, see, what happens is, the more masculine you are, the more you want the woman to be submissive. The more dumb. Oh my god, bro! This nigga has not said a true thing the entire time. But I mean, if she is, then the more 
I don't know. I think I'm pre- I think I'm pretty fucking masculine, dude. And I don't want somebody that's miserable. That, I'm saying that in that moment you're in He's your projecting so ahead. hard right now. If you and your wife have like a conversation about a disagreement and then you guys like a healthy conversation and then she ends up being right in the situation, would you consider her dominating me? No, I consider her right. So like, the what's your definition of like domin- like, dominant like you always have to be right to the no. extreme? I should have clarified my Dono, but he's not cooking. Yeah, he making you look crazy right now because this is his approach. He taking your argument. He making you look dumb as fuck. It's not I about get what right you're saying. It's though. about who's running the show. So by her being right, is that not her? No, that's just her being right in that conversation. Yeah, a good le- a good leader would allow someone else to be right. A good leader doesn't have to be right. He wants the team to win. Oh my in god, fact, you're not a leader. If he wouldn't allow a woman to be right on the subject, she was clearly. Right. I like that. I do like that. And you know, wait, you call the man insecure if he's not allowing his woman to be right in one instance, but you don't call him insecure because he needs her to be submissive to him for reasons that neither of you will even explain or give any type of like credit to. It's crazy. But it goes back to the question of like, what do you find more attractive? Because that's what we're talking about. Yeah, it's a that's what I said. It's a a preference. literally it's a preference. preference. One of the things you said is like, when you and your partner or girlfriend get into something and it's like a little heated, like, I get off on that. Me, I totally don't get off on that. Like, I need, I don't need any back talk. I don't need any lip. I don't need any attitude. I need. It's my way or the highway. Like, I don't want none of oh, it. Oh, okay, okay. So he don't want a daughter. He want a slave. Got it. The conversation right. in the first place. Right. About so, I thought it was. I thought it was like. He, he, he good though. I, I understand now. I get it. I get it. No back talk. I'm right. That's a different thing. If we're talking, if we're if we're talking about a topic, I get it. Right about the topic. That's just how. No, I was talking about the topic. An opinion of yours or things that. No, I'm talking about. Agrees with. You're like an opinion. You're saying you want no back. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about opinions. I'm talking about decisions. So, so we can have a conversation about a topic, but when it comes to a decision. The final decision is mine. Let me change my word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have a healthy discussion about a decision, which she disagrees. She says, I disagree. Right. She says, so if we say, hey, we want to do, she wants to do A, B, and C. And I say, no, nah, I want to do D, E, and F. Right? We're, that. We're, we're doing D, E, and F at the end of the day. Now, I'll, I will listen to what she says. And if I, if I think A, B, and C sounds better, then I say, okay, yeah, let's do A, B, and C. Because that sounds bad. bad talk. He talked to broke bitches. That's, that's what this is giving right now. You talk to broke bitches. You talk, you talk to people that... You got a little something, and and they they have to abide by what you say, or else there's some consequence, my boy. Because there's no way that any woman I feel like that's worth like actually, you know, what I'm saying, doing all this shit that he's talking about. I don't feel like the good ones, like the 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 crazy, like the crazy, the best ones to me, like they just not they not letting you get that off. And you shouldn't. That you shouldn't want them to let you get that off. That's that's just sound kind of crazy, place. bro. No, no, no. That's even in no, the conversation. No, that's this. What I'm saying. If we're having a conversation, that's cool. I'm saying the final decision though is mine. So, so, so you can speak your mind, but at the end of the day, I'm making the final decision. So it's like I'm gonna let you right. talk. Yeah, I'll let like, you talk. Yes. At the, in the end, I don't really care. Like, like, they got, got no confidence. They got no money. They got no future. I don't want to touch upon the. Is there more thing with like, like let's let's clarify submissive. Let's not get that mistaken between incompetent. Like, oh. submissive does not mean incompetent. And I think you might have been talking about women that could be incompetent, where they don't have the capacity to take care of themselves at all or make any type of decision. So I think there's definitely a difference in how she shows up in the relationship compared to being able to make decisions in her everyday life. Sure, you but he doesn't want shit. them to make decisions. About, no, no, I didn't say I didn't want them to make decisions. I'll say That's no, literally what you just final, said. No matter what. <laughs> some, of, some of the strongest women in the world right now are sitting in submissive roles because they're strong enough to think for themselves and do what they feel good in their heart. Because there are women that do want to be submissive naturally. And some of those women are the strongest women in the world right now, especially when the world's telling them to go be something that they don't want to be. I do agree that, honestly, it is a choice. It's a the preference. world isn't telling them to be something that they don't want to be. The world is saying, yo, you have a choice. You don't Throwing have to the be this is all. Close-minded. What he you said is the cause of toxic relationships. Like, I, I don't know why he thinks that because you're now offered a choice that you're now being forced into one way or the other. Like, they're just saying you have freedom. That's it. Why wouldn't you want your woman to have freedom? Friends, you know, we shouldn't speak upon like everybody. You don't even want her to have a choice. It's always a gray area. It's a range. It's not, it's not one or it's not one side or or the other. And if you guys want to be in a relationship where the woman is submissive and the woman also wants to be in a relationship where the male is dominant, that's completely fine. But the, the thing I want to talk about more is the fact that like, you guys keep saying that like, this is what women want or that like all women want this. Who are we to decide what women want? Because first of all, we're not women. And second, just because of our personal experiences in our lifetime about the people we, we've interacted with, 
I feel like that's something we need to take a step back from and clarify that like, no, this is just my personal opinion. In the end, we don't know what women want. Women knows what they want, not men. I, I have yet. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I don't respect the mouth that that came out of, but I kind of agree with it. Like I said, at the end of the day, but your frame is too shaky for me to fully, you know what I'm saying, back what you were saying. Definitely properly seated in the beta position. Um, I feel like the words coming from another individual will impact me better and make me into the alpha that they're telling me to be. So that's just where I stand on that situation. Secondly, though, um, I agree. Yet to see a relationship dynamic, because I would say a relationship dynamic that is optimal has deep connection where you could say there's a deep friendship there, mm. but also there's sexual polarity. And I've seen dynamics where there is a great friendship there and there is connection and they do live very cohesively. But when the woman is more dominant, the majority of the time, I have yet to see a dynamic where consistently over time, there is strong sexual polarity on her end in a dynamic. And that's fine. Like if that's if that's what you've seen in your lifetime, that's completely fine. Like, but that, I think but that's biology book. says that. I don't think it's just my personal opinion. I don't think, but like, probably you need to surround yourself with. Yeah, yeah that's, that's just saying. It's like just because you've grown up in a certain area yeah, where like people are like that, because like I could say the same thing, but on the other side, where I've seen plenty of people and plenty of relationships where, like. That wasn't the case, but then they're like sexually fine, you know, that they're perfectly fine, their polarity is completely fine, and they're happy. And I could say the same thing. I could keep going at you saying that, like, oh, because of what I've seen or what I've ex I've experienced, dominant men, it won't work. But then that's dumb because there are cases where dominant women do work. Sure, now are you submissive? When I need to be. But there's also cases where it doesn't. No, it's all it's when they're all, it's happy, all they're probably not going out saying I'm so. Happy. I'll be looking for ways to be submissive. I'll be looking for it. Happy, I'm down. Take the reins on that, babe. You know what I'm saying? I don't be saying it, babe, because babe just sound kind of crazy. It does. I mean, and I'm a woman. He's back up going around saying that. You know, like, they're just happy. They stick to themselves. You know when your girl, like when you're getting written, you're, you're being submit, like you're submitting low key. I'm just saying. Like a lot of y'all think that y'all been dominant the whole time. Like, I'm just saying. That was most of the time that that happened. All right. I am great at sex. Oh, brother. Oh, Lord. I can't imagine what the shit these niggas is about to say right now. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> Y'all can't all go to the front, man. Come on, dude. I mean, I have a lot to learn. Seven out of 80 y'all niggas got lied to. What's <laughs> <laughs> That's a word. I mean, disgusting. <laughs> oh, no. My man is back there. Look, okay. This is a lose-lose situation. Because if you go to the front, niggas not going to believe you. <laughs> if you stay in the back, you look like, what the fuck is wrong with this nigga? <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> right, right now. <laughs> Bro, this was a chance to redeem yourself. No, no, I know, but it's just hard. Right. Actually, yeah, I'm going to go back. Oh, no, sorry. Oh. Bro, what's with wrong with My partner, my, my wife, I'm able to not only connect physically physically but also <laughs> for my my wife i'm able to not only connect physically physically but also oh my god this is a oh this is amazing so emotionally you know as oh I think god i'm in tears connect physically physically but also emotional, <laughs> you know, is, but then I think that's the biggest trick I've learned. Not oh, I got to put that on the soundboard. Oh, no. Trick, the thing I've learned about my years oh, of God. being with my partner. You have to sort of like, you know, keep the spice oh, going. I, I would say, uh, that you know, was I think hilarious. The, the fact that we have a woman who keeps coming back, who keeps <laughs> wanting it, I think that, you know, that's a sign oh. that she thinks you're great at sex. You know what I mean? Because she, oh, cause she actively wants to keep it going and keep it, keep it, you know, keep it, uh, going in that in that direction i would i will say though oh, man i'm better at sex with women i care about yeah, you know so true. i think and, and yeah. me being a player and a guy so that wait my boy is just self-exposing self-reporting guy who goes out and talks to a lot of different women um you know if if with my girlfriend or like my wife or whatever like that sex is sex would be great with the other girls it can still be good but i know that i don't really put in that much effort because it's almost like I'm masturbating with someone. And eventually, you know, you're, like, you, know your, you know your partner's. My boy looking around the room for approval and shit like that. You mean you're giving your dick to women that aren't worth like having good sex with? Because like at that point, what's the point? Literally, I will go and beat my dick then. Like 
I don't know why niggas think like a body on them just means like something for like it like it says something about the woman that she didn't get best performance out of you. Like it say something about you because you did something with somebody that you didn't like think enough about that you think it would be worthy enough to like put in your best performance for. Like that don't make any sense to me. Just don't fuck them then. That's weird. It's like comfortability, what right. they like, what they don't like, and things, and that's how you make sex a lot better instead of like sleeping with right. A thousand percent, plus you love them. Right. Like, so you knew if you were gonna die today and you could have sex with one person before you die, it would be that person. Why would you wanna have sex right before you die? Why are we talking like this, bro? Like, like no matter on. what. Like, you could have every supermodel, every movie star, everything. Like, fuck all that. Like, I want that person. Focus so much on like what they like as well, you know? Like, you're kind of there to like, pleasure them why not okay so i'm 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 odd man out for not wanting like not wanting to kerplunk and like my shit be everywhere in my last moments i'm off for that instead of just being on like a a japanese mountain somewhere breathing in the good air like i'm i'm weird for that okay i'll be i'll be odd man out that's fine you know because you care about them so much right which is why like you would hyper fixate on like what do they like what they don't like and you can easily like adjust yourself and put in effort for that person. And, and like, for instance, it's so true that you said that because my wife and I, we have this thing we call the love menu. Okay. Oh my God, this nigga is such a loser. <laughs> okay, you know, why did we invent the love menu? We invented the love menu because we have three children and they're only two years apart. They're in the mid twenties now, but you know, think about it. Two, four, six at home and I'm working and she's doing her thing. So. We found that in our young relationship, sometimes the other person might be tired and like turn, but that's hurt feelings. That makes you kind of do this type of thing. So what we did is we come up with a love menu of like, here's the appetizers. I might not be ready for the full course tonight, but here's your appetizer. Nigga, no, ew, gross. I'm sorry, man. Like if we just not in that mode, then like try again. <laughs> like you died, respawn. Like why would, I don't know, bro. I just, I don't know. Like, just wait until you got some... I don't even feel... I don't know. I don't have children. I don't have children. You know what I'm saying? I don't have children. So, I don't know how difficult it is to develop those moments when you got three young kids or whatever situation he's talking about. But I just feel like if you... If the passion for the relationship is still there, y'all gonna find those moments. You know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna make time. It's gonna be situations where, like, you know what? It's been a long day. Pull that dick out. You know what I'm saying? Or bend over. Whatever the situation is, like I feel like that's just the type of time y'all gonna Love be on. Love menu sounds like a high school Disney thing. Yeah, I, I feel just... if you make your girl orgasm, you got her four liters. Yeah, it's just a menu and all that time. It's just too planned out. Because I know you like this, or but I get it. I don't know how marriage is for a lot of people. I really don't, so I can't speak on that. Here is your dessert, or here is your main course meal, and we broke it into those things. So when we do come to each other, and we need that connection. It's not just like, I'm tired, I don't feel like it. It's kind of like, well, what, what's going to happen? Are we have a full course meal tonight or are we just going to have some appetizers? And that kept it, that's kept it spicy for us. And also, like what you say, making sure we're pleasuring each other. It's not just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, I need to get my rocks off. But like, you know, how are you feeling about that? And how are you feeling about that? Because when you're in a long-term committed relationship, you have to do that or it dies. Right. And I love that. I love you talk about the... I don't feel like that, though, bro. I don't feel that way. To be honest, I just think you should be able to have times in your relationship where y'all might not even be fucking. Y'all might not even be having sex and like it not be a big deal. Like it's not something that you have to check off like a menu or something like that. Like maybe you didn't have time for it or maybe you didn't fit it into the schedule or anything like that. But like if that intimacy which is great don't get me wrong but if that's such a huge part of the relationship and if you don't have it then things start to die out i feel like y'all got a bigger problem that y'all not addressing because i've been I, I remember there was this one girl i was in a relationship with that's not really it wasn't really a relationship but we were like constantly like every time every single day boom knock one out knock one out knock one out knock one out anytime we see each other boom then for like two months like not two months like a month straight we didn't do nothing and we was really enjoying each other's company and i didn't think in my mind why aren't we fucking and she didn't i don't think that she thought why aren't we fucking i didn't think like neither of us thought that i just thought that we're now part we're now kind of like exploring another part of what this could be that don't involve this other part and it's not even a problem and i feel like if you married it should be even better 
I, was, I just don't think you should be keeping track of it in your mind like that to, to a point where you need to have a love menu. The amount of intention that you live with in regard to making sure that you're always evolving with it, always making sure that it's spicy, you just care. I think if you have a... Right, I don't know about marriage though, so I'm not a... I'm not a, I'm not one of those niggas, bro. Genuine. Don't take me serious when, it's, when I'm talking about marriage. You care for the other person that you're involved with, then maybe you're not great right then and there, but it will eventually develop into being something that way. So I love that care that you demonstrate with that. I'm interested in what you had to say. You've been very quiet on this one. You've been usually like... <laughs> All he said was, look at the receipts, you know? He, 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 he knows it. He knows it. <laughs> and, and, and look, and that's a very important thing, right? Is So I think that as a man, I hate to say, actually I don't hate to say, uh, that you should come in confidently. And I do find by and largely, it's kind of like you could have the alpha beta argument. I do that thinking coming in kind of a, in, a, in a dominant way. There's a reason Fifty Shades of Grey is so popular. There's a reason it's the most read book of all time. There's a reason there's detail in it. And I think you can say so much to a woman in sex without saying a word. You know what I'm saying? It's about how you touch her, how you have your hands on her, the way you take over her in that way. And that's okay. Just knowing and, and seeing that expression and seeing things that happen and as a result of that is enough for me to know where I stand on the subject. The only thing I disagree with you about is I agree with that energy, that take control energy. And I think when woman does love that, but sometimes my wife likes to take control and I love it. Well, get up there. I can't even address the cringe that just came out of his mouth. But what I will say is you see, you see, how contractual niggas want their relationships to be without saying it the basis for 50 shades of gray was that that nigga made her sign a contract that says you have to consent and be okay with everything that's about to happen in this relationship i gotta lock you in these are these niggas ideas of relationships and 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 like healthy sexual prowess is a a, a girl not being able to tell me no I got to be able to do whatever I want, whenever I want, or else I'm not confident in this situation. These are the most insecure niggas humanly imaginable. He's seen perturbed. He wants a, he wants a 1930s, 1940s, 1950s marriage. He wants a submissive woman. He's citing 50 shades of gray as a healthy sexual relationship. My man's is doomed. My man's is doomed. We're all doomed. Get up there, girl, get up there, girl and do what you got to do. You know, I'm like, I, hey, I don't hey, I'll put my hands to behind to my hand. Too, yeah, cowboy. Hey, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, but what? I, but I, but I, by and largely. Yeah. Yes, and then when she wants to, but even when you're on bottom, man, you're still doing work, bro. It's all about dancing, bro. I don't want to get naked, but I have sex tattooed on my chest. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> well, it wouldn't take much. Half no, it's, out, it's, right, it's right here on my rib. Okay. All right, and it's like a, it's like a old one too. Not even like a. Could have went my whole life never knowing he did that. I think the biggest thing I've ever heard from Just my sexual partners is like, "Wow, Instagram you really caught story. me off guard." Cardi rightfully deserved that Grammy over Astro World. I'm about to watch his. I'm about to watch the story soon, okay? Because I don't know what's going on. Bro, like you, he like getting milked expeditiously. What you mean? And I think that's like a big part of it. I didn't even know what bro talking about. So is this like an argument with myself? Hey man, appreciate you. Go to school. Tell us why you're terrible at sex. <laughs> you missed it. He stripped. <laughs> no, I did see that. I saw it. I, I disagree because I just feel like it's such a typical conversation and belief that every guy believes are great at sex. And to be real, when I talk to my girlfriends, none of them have good sex. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, somebody lying. The amount of women that have professed of having bad sex versus the amount of niggas that profess being great at sex there's a huge discrepancy x with guys unless it's like you guys said your partner then you can get better at it right and you know what they like so that's what i mean like i think i'm great with my girlfriend but if i was to generate and say like i'm great at sex i'm like oh i didn't you know almost every girl i slept with before and i think a better question for this is have i had great sex it's not really always about the nigga some niggas are just trained to believe that there is this person and I have to fuck it, basically. That's like their that's their ideology. But they don't realize it's a lot of shit that you don't even know is like, damn, I didn't even know she could do that. I didn't even know she was on that type of time. I didn't even know I could feel like this. Yes, I say it because like they don't look at the people that they're being with as like 
you know, people. They just look at them as what bro said, the the, the, the dude in the submissive shirt. He said, I'm basically masturbating with a person. Or probably never even got off, really. But to say, like, I'm great at sex. You know, I can bring a dildo in. You know, like, it's just I guarantee like, you, you'll fry the brains of so many men if you ask them if they've had great sex versus if they're good at it. Like, I mean, I'm nothing against that. Like, I, I, I like all kinds I of things. I didn't mention a dildo. <laughs> Why'd you look at me like you? <laughs> I was wondering why you said that. No, I'll just say that. Like, <laughs> but you still look at him. You look like, like, you like, look like the type. No, I'm kidding. I'm not in front of But it's like, I, I just feel like, you know, there's a lot for me to learn even now with my partner. And I just like to say I'm great. I also, I don't say that to myself because I think that blocks me from something that I might not be good at, actually. No, I agree. I, I don't sure, I let's completely just say that, this, like, honestly, that Instagram there's story always room is for the growth. reason why you know, Offset like, has so many going around kids. Saying, thinking that you're like the best is like some is not something that I agree with, but more so that like especially with someone that, you know, like a partner, like that you actually want to give like give the effort into. You learn, you know, like it doesn't always have to go like perfect. Bro, every time bro opens his mouth, everybody just waiting for him to finish. It's crazy. The first time you know you pick up things like everyone's different you know man and woman so like honestly like it's but that's why I, I, when i think when that question says i feel I'm bad great at sex like you it, that that to me tells me you could line up 10 girls and nine out of ten you would know exactly what to do Sometimes with that. it's just like a confident yeah. like i am confident that i can achieve good sex exactly right yeah. that's that's yeah. that's what i'm saying because because yeah. Because the thing is, I, I look at it like you saying, well, being the best, you know, you can't really see me being the best. But I just grab it. I look at I look at it as I am the best, but I'm choosing to be to be great with this person. And so what I'm saying is I can be really great with this one other girl, but I choose not to. And I do that purposely. And the reason why I do it purposely is because you are such like I'm a saying, weirdo. Really, we're friends Good with God. Girls and other stuff is that women have to earn good. Day. That's how <laughs> oh, I look my God. You understand what I'm saying? This nigga is so creepy. He only uses five percent of his true power. This nigga is weird as fuck. That is so weird. My boy said, "Wow, I, yo, they just, they just, they gotta be making these dudes in a factory. They have to be. They have to be. They gotta be making y'all in a factory, like on another planet." Um, with just nitrogen, like no oxygen is going to your brain at all, man. At all. At all. You mean to tell me that it makes sense for you to have sex with women and boom, at the same time say, I don't like you enough to fuck you the way my ego would be boosted blah 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 if i did it the right way quote unquote why am i having sex with you like ain't alpha male about value in yourself why are you having sex with somebody who you don't like enough to give them good sex if you value yourself i'm saying so if i'm if i'm with a woman where i just met you at the bar and we're just hooking up i'll give you i'll give you some like i said i should say women should earn great but i'll give her some good but it ain't gonna be great because you haven't earned it. You're not my girl. You haven't done anything. Not gonna go the extra mile for her. right. Exactly. I'm not gonna go the extra mile for a new girl. Like, I just... agreed with the. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with the mentality, but then not the the state of it. Right. I'm just not gonna do all that for a new girl. I'm, just not, I'm not gonna do that. So I... and why is he acting like it's so much more effort? Like something got to be wrong with you, bro. Like, what, are you pulling out a, a special attack during the fuck session? To where it's like, oh, she ain't, my wife ain't going to be able to handle this one. So I'm going to save the special move for at home. But the other ones, they just getting regular, like, button mashing attacks. Like, what what game are you playing here? I can't, so I, what I'm saying is, is that the greatness comes from within you to know that you can. But you have to make the decision to do that. And I think once, and most guys, if they care about a woman, they, they'll do that because that woman, in some form or fashion, has earned that type of energy from him. And that, that's how I look at it. It's like, I completely agree, but I just want to change the word earn to something else. <laughs> something similar, but that means a little different. Because, like, you don't want to give as much effort to, like, other people that you don't really you, you see, like, long-term with. But then, like, obviously, if it's, like, a partner or someone that you can see a future with, you know that you can 
keep you know improving <laughs> you can be like the best you know for that person who thinks that great sex is is more mental or more physical who which one would you raise your hand oh well, god that's what his wife told him which one say say, okay. say one of them who, who thinks that great sex is more mental i mean it's more i think it's more mental fuck okay. mm-hmm. You need a healthy combination of both. That's why you can't really... I'm not saying you can't have great sex if you don't know the person. I'm not saying that. But that's why people typically think that they have sex with the people... That's why people typically think that they have the best sex with people that they know well because it's mental and it's physical. So this is kind of like a pointless question. Okay. But it, it, it it certainly is true that you probably can have great sex or sex that feels great with somebody that you barely know. I'm sure that, I'm sure that exists. Thanks, great sex is more physical. The reason why I sat down and then I stepped back is because stepping down, uh, it was, I mean, sitting down, it was just kind of like that societal pressure of, you know, we all agree, like, men have to be uh, really great at Good sex. At <laughs> and I had to check myself out of my ego and take a step back because... It can't be nine out of 10, it has to be 10 out of 10. I know I've had, you know, one night stands and I can't account for every single partner that I've had if they had a great experience or not. I could just be honest with myself and say, I did my best, but you know, for whoever is gonna be my partner next, you have to have that, like that sense of like open-mindedness in a way, because what they might think they want from you to make you great, you might not agree with even trying. You know, I get what you're saying about women having to earn uh, great, but I feel like at the same time, <laughs> why is it so, so funny coming out of your mouth? I feel like, um, it sounds absurd. I, I told you I'm a comedian. I feel like at the same time, um, you know, women's needs are a lot different than men's in bed. So what might be, you know, easy for you, like a quick one, two, they're expecting, you know, maybe more foreplay or more physical intimacy or, you know, and with the whole like BDSM with like 50 shades of gray, I think that appeal to like a certain subset of women and their fantasies but i don't think that accounts for all women i think it's a great fantasy but i think if you put most women bro just said a whole bunch of nothing like no they really want it women should not be in position of power oh god of course game over it got it had to be him just like his (laughs) aunt says i'm the only one i think a woman can be in a position of power only by herself, but not in relation to being in a relationship with a man. Because when when she's in a relationship with a man, the man has to be the leader. The man has to be the one that's guiding the situation, directing the situation. If it's in any other situation by herself with work, you know, with her friends or whatever, she can do whatever she wants to do. <laughs> this game nigga over. is the biggest narcissist. <laughs> Your game is over. <laughs> <laughs> I first want to ask because there was a lot of like, like has to have tos, but like not really a reason behind it. Like, can I ask like, what's your reason behind like why a man has to be in the power, like in power? Why can't a woman? Why be? power is such a weird word. I'll say more like the leadership role, and I and the thing is is that it's a man has thing. to lead a woman. He has to guide a woman because what happens is that when when it's the opposite, when a woman is leading that man, she usually loses respect for him. When she's in a relationship with a man who is, you know, under her, who's submissive to her in a lot of different situations, then she starts to lose respect for him because she's looking for a man to lead and guide her. If you notice, they have sex with the bad boys, but then the nice guys get tossed to the side. (laughs) Oh, my God. This nigga's brain is just like so far behind. It's crazy. Like, why is that? (laughs) Well, if you look at them psychologically, they have past traumas and issues probably. But like. Look, there's there's women for you, right? I mean, like uh, you're on a different scale. What I would my man's brought up the nice guy argument. Say some women want a guy like you because they don't want to do anything, right? They don't want to take that position. Um, I'm around a lot of women who don't want that. They're they're in positions of power, not just in work, career, at home. Uh, I know a lot of them. I do business. I find women much more pleasant to do business with. But when you're talking about maybe being at home. I don't know. It's just like, I think when you get into your part, your end of the pond, it can get a little bit mucky. You know what I mean? And I, I, I don't really subscribe to that as well. I heard you say you were from New York. I lived in Manhattan for 30 years as a fashion designer in the heart of Manhattan. A uh, fashion de- All right. She was working as a fashion editor. I held it down with the three kids. I was the one bringing the money home. I was the one doing that. 
after this, after my son, my young- I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just believe him. Youngest went back to school. She went back to work. I always wanted to have my own collection. She was like, you should do that now. So guess what? She had the job. She paid the bills while I was building my company. So I could be strong in our relationship and be a man in our relationship, but I also got to know what it means to have a partner next to me and not someone that I have to lead. Well, I, th I think it's really, really important to specify what leading means. And so right now we're talking about, you talked about, okay, we do the chores. Sometimes she pays more, sometimes I pay more. I, I think it's looking at a really superficial level. I think what you look at in a relationship when you look at leadership and the one that is following per se is who's the one holding down the emotional space? Like who has the capacity to show up as the rock the majority of the time in a dynamic. And if that is the woman, I believe for the most part, the polarity gets thrown off and there will be a deficiency in the sexual attraction that she'll have for you. If you are more excessively oh emotional and unstable than your wife, I do believe that's going to lead to issues in the relationship. Oh. That didn't have anything to do with the question at hand. That literally just said women should not be in positions of power. And you're talking about whether or not her man is emotionally stable or not. That wasn't the fucking question. What if he's emotionally stable as shit and then she's still in a position of power? What does that mean then? What are we talking about? A man's job is to be the mountain that a woman's emotional waves crash into. These niggas are prime narcissists and it's crazy. This is one question that is only about women. And how are you still making it back to men? I don't get it. Like straight up. So m women are always gonna be more emotional than men. Men should be the stable ones. Men don't need to be crying in front of women. And ideally, they're not splitting chores. And I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I, don't, I think that if a woman cannot look up to you in some way, then she cannot respect you. And if she cannot respect you, she cannot love you. I totally just yeah. that. Totally, yeah. just, Mine, totally, love, love. totally just love. Yeah, I, so <laughs> and the only reason I didn't come sit down is because I have some really, really good women in, in leadership roles in my, in my businesses. And they are absolute leaders. Now, they might lead under me, but I think they stand alone as leaders, and I respect them enough that I would never... And that means that you are in the position of power, and they are not. You've created this false, you know, leadership under underneath your supervision to where you've tried to make them believe that they're leaders, but they're still you that they have to answer to. It's a lot of mental gymnastics that you have to go through to get to this point, I want you, I want you to know. Never come sit down over that particular statement because it's too vague but in the relationship yes sir i do agree that a man should be the leader he should be the breadwinner and he should be the one solving all the problems out in the world and emotionally at home i i i, I just I mean, i'm glad again that you that you two say for work it's fine but when it comes to our relationship i got to be the one to wear the pants and i okay let's not say pants we'll use your the person's words i got to be <laughs> the mountain that her emotions crash into I hate to tell you guys, we can be very emotional too. And I know a lot of guys in my 55 years that are way emotional than some of these women out here now that are taking charge. So I think that's- No, I agree with you. I agree with you. They are, but they notice. And I don't think it hurts the relationship either. And if you notice, isn't it weird that nowadays they're talking about all these single sexless men and all these guys having issues? Why do you think that is? They're becoming more emotional than ever. Exactly. I think, no. What? Bro, what the fuck? Do y'all, do y'all? Never mind. I think women are putting up with less bullcrap. No, they yes, no, 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 they're not putting up. I am not a sexless single guy. <laughs> no, I'm not saying you. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying this. But no one said you were. <laughs> my girlfriend is an emotional rock for me. That's what I mean. I'm sorry, but I gotta strongly disagree with everything you say. I'm also a breadwinner right now. She, it wasn't always like that though. Uh, she's going through a time, and she wants to actually do something for herself, and I totally support that. But when it comes to an emotional, whatever you just said, that analogy, look, I mean, I think that's the problem also with a lot of uh, toxicity that goes on because some men, a lot of men have emotions, you don't know how to express it, and then it turns into this opposite toxicity. How do I know this? I used to be one of them. Me too. <laughs> they, like, it feels like a lot of these like rich millionaires are the ones that like have huge high divorce rates and things of that sort. And I think it's because they're just genuinely unhappy. Like, is your woman with you for your security or do they actually like you as a person? Mm -hmm. And we're starting to see that like, yeah, like, yeah, women want me at first, but I don't think it ends well because after a while, like they want you for your security. They don't want you for who you are as a person and things of that sort. And that's why we see these millionaires and all these like really alpha males getting high divorce rates. Cause I think at first it starts off with like alpha. security. Money doesn't make you alpha. Yeah, I think so. No, not at all, man. Not at all. Nope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah, I'm about to say you educate me. That's why yeah. I came here. <laughs> a man can just be friends with an attractive woman. 
Can? Cat. Cat. No technicalities, bro. <laughs> so I think it's all about, again, as we've been saying before, it's all about choices. Um, I think if you find a woman attractive, it depends on, you know, are you going to choose to pursue her or not? Um, but for some of us, you know, like if we're speaking from personal experience, I've met many attractive women. Um, and that's not the only thing that, you know, I'm looking for. It's also about personality. So you, she can be a 10, but if it's like the, the personality is just, you know, someone who doesn't challenge me on a spiritual level, emotional level. Hey, yo, man, these niggas take like taking a long time to just say yes or no, bro. Look, point blank period. I didn't have some attractive friends and I didn't fuck some of them friends still. Some of them not so much because the fuck ruined it. Um, and then there are attractive friends that, I have that I've never done anything with. So obviously it's possible. Like this is a stu. I hate this question because yes, it's, it's of course it's possible. Um, someone who also is like emotionally unavailable, like then it doesn't really matter. I I have friends who are like you know I would consider very attractive, but then at the same time I could and when I think about it, I pro I wouldn't be able to stand like being alone in a room with them for like more than like ten minutes. You know what I mean? I could acknowledge it's if, like really just a, okay sometimes are attractive, but doesn't mean I'm like sexually attracted to them. And it comes to a point where like I see them as like sisters or just such close friends that even like the thought of them naked like grosses me out because like i just don't see them that way i see them as like very close like wait the thought of them na wait <laughs> niggas just love putting their foot in their mouth i almost like family in some cases and things of that sort and you know sometimes like you grow up with certain women and you like you see them as like a sister and you see them as a close friend and you just grow up and you don't see her like that fundamentally what's di what's natural and what is possible i think are two different things is it natural to not be attracted to a very attractive woman to you? I don't think so. But with a lot of intention with it and your priorities are elsewhere and you're very intentional with how you're showing up in that space, I think you can do it. I think that was a question if it can be done, not if it's natural or not. If I'm attracted to you, honestly, I'm trying to, I'm trying to smash. You understand I'm trying, we, we, we gotta have sex. And we have to have be in some type of sexual situation, or I don't really want to, you know, interact with you. On top of that, oh, this nigga I don't weirdo. believe in giving women non-sexual attention unless we're in a relationship. Oh my god, bro, this nigga, bro, oh my goodness. Oh and god. the reason why is because I feel like uh, non-sexual attention from a man towards a woman is very valuable. So I'm not just giving you that just to be friends. <laughs> you know, so I'm saying like, I'm not just going to do that for you. And so what it is, is that if I'm going to do that for you, you have to be under my program, which means that we're in some sort of sexual relationship. Oh boy. Between me and you. You see what I'm saying? So that, that's how I look at that. I think that men and women can be friends. It's just not because the man wants to. Mm -hmm. Most often it's the man is trying to sleep with the woman. Right. And he's trying to hang around long enough for her to slip up and make that mm -hmm. happen. I mean, exactly. let's keep it a hundred. Exactly. Right. So it's can the they, first yes, point bros made the whole time. Like, when I saw you moving, I'm like, <laughs> but but Nigga said, overall, we must. most of the time you're not going to see a man be friends with a very overweight woman you're not going to see a man be friends with, with a very unattractive woman unless there's some kind of financial reward there so by and largely i don't buy guy friends particularly with any girl i'm seeing it's like yeah right i think when, it, when i think about it like and i had a technicality on the other side because i you know i'm like yeah part of me really believes that can happen but then I go back to my experience in life and my friends, and it's really hard. I, I, I was running over there in my head to like, should I sit down? But I was running all these scenarios from life experience of my friends who have said that, girls and guys, because it's not just guys. And it's never worked out that way. It just never is. And I think because, and it's if you find the person can be, <laughs> yes, the person the can be an attractive person. Do? And you not find that person attractive, and you be friends. You have friendship. I think, yeah, attraction. That's yeah. my thing. Yeah, Part of the relationship that. is it's friendship and getting right. along and then on top of it you find that person attractive no way i just think it's a very rare very rare thing right. you know it just a person can be attracted to me and you not find them attractive and i can be friends with that person but if i'm finding that or if you're finding that person attractive and you build a friendship and you connect and yeah. you connect then you want to you probably want to be with them that's like, I, want to be, I don't think adam and mike say it doesn't exist but to me just again in my experience in life and just knowing my friends and people i don't know it can exist you just have to set up boundaries but like i said a lot of the people who have been in these situations haven't set those boundaries like i said before i hadn't set those boundaries but i didn't need to because i wasn't in a relationship with anybody 
And of course, if you want to just have more friends long term, it's better to set up those boundaries. But if you don't have the responsibilities like going home to have to answer to another person in a relationship, then that's where I feel like a lot of these anecdotal like stories come from. But I think in general, if you ask like married people, I don't know, like maybe or people in relationships, I'm sure they exist out there. It's like attractive people being friends with one another. And this person has a boyfriend or this person has a girlfriend. Like, obviously, it's possible. The one that has worked out. I mean, there's nothing wrong with like your own experiences. Obviously, if that's what you've seen or that's what you personally experienced, that like you yourself couldn't be in a friendship with a woman. But being honest, these boundaries ain't gonna stop feelings from developing. I think they will. I think they will. I 100% think they will. Like, again, that's your personal ex experience though. Whereas the question is like, can a man, any man, be in a, like a regular friendship with a woman? Like a real, real friendship? Yeah. Like they're actually really friends? Yeah. And he I, not want to sleep with yeah. her and find her attractive? Right. No. I don't, I don't, yeah, I think it's I think it's BS. Because like at that point, like you're also we're always talking about like now we're talking about like what is an attractive woman, right? And are we talking about just looks? Because in this case, like the heart wants what the heart wants, nigga. That's your dick. There are people who like honestly don't don't like have sexual like desires for a woman who isn't like emotionally like. I think it's is she attractive to you? Yeah. I think that's like the basis of it. When you look at specific situations, so for some of these females that work for you, for example. Nigga if, said I'm with BTS. Wow. They're very attractive. Do you feel, I would imagine you have the, the capacity to compartmentalize that? Gift from God. Yeah, man. I just, it, the second I sign their check, it's gone. It's gone, right? <laughs> so it's just, I think it's the same thing with friends as significant others as well. It's like I have the ability to compartmentalize it where it's like, all right, this attraction is just dissipates. So is that the barrier that can make a man attract a man attract a man friends with an attractive woman? If there's that barrier of him being in a relationship or are you working for them? Well, first of all, we're not friends. You work for me. Right. You know, I care about you fully. You're part of the family, but you work for me. We're not personal friends and me and you will not be in an atmosphere. We're alone. Right. So when you go back to it, is it a thing where if you're both single, do we all think that you could be a friends with an attractive woman? If we're both single. Hell no. Nope. I don't yeah. know. Well, no, I don't know. <laughs> A man should not cry in front of his kids. This is absurd. This is absurd. It ain't popular. It's not gonna be popular to say this. But ideally, you're not gonna cry in front of your kids. They cry to you. Is it fair? No. Is life fair? No. Is the dynamic between a man, a woman, a child fair? No. But personally for me, I wanna take that responsibility of being the one that's stronger than all of them. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that responsibility. I want that responsibility in my life. You're not stronger than them because you can't cry in front of them. That makes you weak. The fuck? You mean you can't confidently and okay express an emotion in front of people, be able to verbalize where that emotion came from and tell them why it's happening. You mean, you mean to tell me that makes you weaker? You got to run away from your kids to go cry? And you talking about what strength is? What? I want to feel like I was a hero to them in every way. And I don't think a man that cries in front of his family is not the hero. That's but crazy. Ideally, I'm not going to be doing that. Right. I, you know, it's weird. I, I've never actually seen my dad cry till this day. <laughs> Nigga, have you seen your dad? <laughs> <laughs> like not even once. The kids is looking to their father. That was racist. My bad. I didn't mean that. For that strength. And so if they're seeing their dad cry, <laughs> right? I feel like that creates fear in the situation the kid has with their father. Oh, if man. you're crying in front of your kids, it's the same thing as crying in front of your girl. It, it it's it's a it's a bad representation of what you're supposed to be in that situation for them. Oh, now I'll tell you when I do cry, bro. When you see like one of those kids with Down syndrome get put in a high school basketball game, he starts nailing threes, and the gym goes crazy, bro. I'll be crying my ass off. Nigga, what the fuck type of bitch ass scenario was that? What? First of all, those don't even be existing like that. Who the fuck would cry for a kid that got an easy lay like that? I ain't gonna lie, I'm, I'm critiquing them in the back of my mind. Like, yo, they, they, they let this nigga get that off for free? Word? Okay. I guess we just doing anything now. Regardless, that ain't got nothing to do with what I was just saying. This dude crying over that but won't cry in front of his kids? Like, I just, I feel like it's something wrong, bro. Like, that's insane. Why would you bring up that specific ass scenario that makes you cry? I'm so happy for the kid. <laughs> I just, I'm just like happy. I'm like laughing. I'm like, you know, but other than that, man, uh, no, not at all. Call me. My man's gonna say anything. <laughs> I'm definitely Can blocking the kindergarten. I was gonna fight. Look, I have a father who I've never seen cry. 
So I get that. I was that man. Again, you have to understand my kids, my middle girl, my middle world daughter, who I'm going to talk about is 26 years old. Now, for some reason, out of all three of my children, that middle girl, from the time she turned 13 to 17, 18, we just butted heads. Butted heads, right? And the relationship wasn't going to where it should be going. And I want to be close to my kids. We sat down, she was about 20, maybe 19, 20 years old. We had a heart to heart about our feelings and how we really felt about each other and I cried. And six years later, some years later, better relationship than we ever had because she saw a human part of me and not just me trying to be what you guys are talking about, which is a good thing too. You can count, my, my, my wife can count on one hand how many times she's seen me cry. I think my son had and my other daughter have it. But I'm gonna tell you for that enriching moment, and that's again, just coming with years of having those tears with her and talking about how important it was that our relationship work and then hear her come back and saying she felt the same way and breaking through that. And I think these people also don't realize like the damage that you can cause or the confusion that you can cause to a kid when you cry in front of them and you don't explain or don't have a grasp over why you're feeling the way you feel. Like that's emotional turmoil for a kid to not know why my parent is feeling this way or why they have like this random emotional breakdown because it's going to come out at some point, even if you don't cry in front of your kids, it's going to come out in some way at some point and you're going to leave your kid extremely confused and you're not, not you're not going to know how to explain it and they're not going to know how to process it. And it's just fucked up like you're harming your kid by not expressing yourself and knowing why you feel you feel what you feel and explain to them why you feel it. And if it's OK and if it's not, um, you're leaving them in a horrible, a horrible position. I'm the father. I'm going to be the strong one made her break down and both of us be closer than we ever have been. Can I ask you a question about sure. that? Do you think that if you could have set her down earlier than the age that you did and just had a vulnerable conversation that maybe it could have happened, like it wouldn't have had to build all the way up to tears? No. She wouldn't have been like up here. I it build all the way up to tears. Like it's just like, like it's a sin. Or No, because what was going on- You know how easily you can cry? My understanding of our relationship is that you know, young people, I'm very independent. My children are very independent. They don't want to be controlled in a certain way. And as a father, you still have to keep that control. She was only seeing that side. So she was only seeing this domineering person trying to squish what she thought that she wanted to be or who she wanted to be. And that wasn't it. I was just trying to play the father role. I saw my dad do it. Not, never a tear. He's that man, you know? And I was raised by that man and I took that on. I remember sitting my son down and telling him, boys, don't cry. And I still to this day regret that. And I still talk to him, he's 24. I still talk to him about, I was wrong. Because I do not think that's the way we're supposed to live our lives. And I think that's why you go back to the statistic of how a lot of men are depressed. We're supposed to have emotions, we're human. Now, I don't believe every time you turn around, you should be in front of your children, ooh, ooh, and your wife, like, you know, I think that's a drastic thing. But I know dropping a tear <laughs> as a father for me made a relationship and so much closer and so much better than it would have. I'm telling you, I know what that it would have ever been. Do you, you don't think you could have shown that vulnerability without the tear? No. My dad was capable of expressing emotion, not from the standpoint of being a whiny little baby. He held, down, held it down on my family. My parents are the happiest couple I've ever seen still to this day. Um, but my dad was able to, and still is able to, at funerals, be able to show emotion during movies when he feels the emotion, be able to show up and do that. Um, he, I'd never see him whining about like what well, you guys are saying, whining about just issues happening in his life, like at work and what he's doing. Never, he deals with that on his own, but he is showing up vulnerably when he is experiencing an emotion, not from a, a whiny baby place, but from a freeness that he has with it. And uh, I even think like when I first went off to college. But nobody ever brought that up. You just brought up that scenario. Which, you know, he's, he's tearing up too. So I would just like to say, um, this is a field I specialize in. I'm I a want, program manager. I want one of these niggas to start crying while they're talking about this. This will be icing on the cake. For a nonprofit that focuses on mental health. Um, and a lot of the times what we what we get... To start crying and make the room awkward. Our clients... Like, see what these niggas say. Our men that are coming in dealing with childhood trauma. Uh, these expectations and standards of trying to live up to the quote-unquote masculine um, ideal. So a lot of the times we, we have men coming in because they're still trying to seek approval in their 30s or they're still trying to get that male validation, you know, in their 40s. And it goes back to making sure we understand the difference between regulating your emotions and suppressing them. I think it's that's why I said earlier, like to be an alpha, you have to be balanced. You guys can be emotional as well. You guys can be vulnerable. It doesn't make you less than. 
just like a woman being more assertive doesn't make her less than a woman. If you feel like you don't want to promote being emotional in front of your kids, you know, I've asked the question, does that kind of fall into toxic masculinity for your son? Well, first, I, I, I didn't say anything about not being vulnerable. Vulnerable is the word that I brought up. So I think being vulnerable is very important. I think crying, physically crying in front of your kids is not ideal. This is not about an ego stroke or, or trying to be overly masculine. I think being vulnerable as a man is one of the strongest things a man can actually do. It's I don't know which one of them called it called it uh called it weak earlier. I'm pretty sure somebody said it literally the exact opposite what he's saying right now. I don't know if he's the one who said it uh or not, but it's only like I said, it's only bad when you don't explain what's going on. You have to be able to explain it. Take yourself the task of explaining to your to your seed, to your youngin, this is what I'm feeling, why I'm feeling it. And it's okay for me to feel like this. It's okay for you to feel like this. Just He making it seem like crying isn't a part of an emotion. I don't, like, what is this? I don't think that crying, particularly sobbing, is going to be very healthy as the leader and the person that they're supposed to come to for that safety and that care. But isn't real vulnerability then? Then you're just not being honest, but like, yo, babe, sorry. I had this thing. I just, I left and I cried. But now I'm here to be strong with you. That's real vulnerable. I can't think of a scenario yeah. where I'd leave to cry. Yeah. See, yeah. I guess. Well, just... But needing feels performative. I'm trying to show you how vulnerable I am. No, no, it's not necessarily showing. It's, it's I think you can be very vulnerable right. without crying. Yeah. People just express their sadness in different ways. You yeah. can be. But I heard what you guys were saying earlier, and I agree with that. It's like, you know, you don't want to be a cry. My nigga got a problem with his tear ducts. Baby, right. about it's things. Not. We don't. Right. right. <laughs> but it's like. To be at, for instance, if I'm at a funeral and this person meant something to tell me, no, can't do that. Or I see something on television or a movie that moves me, like, you can't do that. It's like kind of like a very weird thing. And I, I, I think you guys touched upon that. There's just I, like a weird stigma behind like crying because it seems like we keep associating crying with weakness. And then the issue is that like, again, there is a big difference between crying and sobbing yeah. <laughs> so hysterically sobbing like i think that should only do if you like say you lost a loved one like really close to you like what do you mean what you should do how are you going to tell somebody how to re respond to a situation like everybody's going to re react to these things different obviously you can go overboard but my nigga, like, why are you trying to police the way somebody cries and how hard they cry and the amount of tears that they drop? You're only allowed to drop 17 tears when you do weep and sob. You can't, you know what I'm saying? No snot can come out of your nose. I don't want to see no facial expressions. I want a still face with one singular tear dropping and you look in your son's eyes very slowly and say, son, I'm sad. And you walk away and don't explain yourself. It's like that's what they want them to do. Like you gotta do it a very specific way where it's not valid or you doing too much. Like, not like say like your significant other, say like public accident, like stuff, stuff like that. You know, like there are obviously scenarios for that. For like regular crying, again, kind of like we, we all touched. Like I need for my mom to have died or something, or I need to be attending a funeral or see a really sad movie scene for my tears to be valid. Like what conversation are we having? That we're not saying that you have to cry every other day, but like. There are like cases where it's it's okay. It should be okay. As kids, we look for like we look up to our dads to be able to. How do we react to certain scenarios? Do you feel that like okay, like for instance, like my dad didn't cry. I've never think I've ever seen my dad cry. I've seen very bad and like sad scenarios, straight face, you know. And I feel like I developed that as like a kid, like as a, as I got older, like I have to keep this inside because that's how exactly just how I saw my dad do it. How would you basically t like explain to your kids how they feel like they should let out their sadness? Should they Keep, especially if you feel like you're not really expressing sad emotions in front of them. I think probably the best thing I can do is like explain to you what my goal as a father is, is to explain them the truth of the world. Truly, hey, this is the truth of the world. This is how the world is. Here's some competencies and things you can do to set yourself up because my ultimate goal for my children is to have choice. So I can have a son. He could be gay. He could cry. He could be straight. He could cry. Like, I'm, it, like I could have daughters that were dominant masculine. I don't care as long as they have choice. I personally, my preference... And, and what I aspire to be and what I want to be and what I get to be is that strong man for my family. We all kind of believe that, like, we have to be a hero for our kids. Right? So Monica didn't say nothing. You didn't answer the question I at agree. all. I think, I think it's totally, like, you need to be a role model for your kids, you know, and you need to be a safe space, which I completely agree with. 
but things happen as they grow up, you know what I mean? Especially when they go towards their teen years, when they start being more in touch with their emotions, when they're actually like feeling a lot of different things and feeling the pressure of society and everything that's collapsing around them. Sometimes they don't just need like a hero, they need a father to like commune with, to like actually talk with. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never learned less about niggas in an hour in my life. This is crazy. Like, damn. I'm sitting up here thinking that these niggas about to, they, they about to show me something. They ain't show me shit. That's crazy. They ain't all of them. Well, is there is there like a dude? Oh no, the dude in the hat. I, I you know I kind of felt him. I think it was just the dude in the hat. That was it. This dude right here. This the only dude that I could empathize with. Everybody else, cringe. Oh no no no. He was cool. This dude right here. He was he was he was reasonable. This dude's reasonable. Cringe. I, I, extreme cringe. Uh, understandable, but still cringe. You don't even need to be there. Cringe as fuck. Um, still cringe, but I respect it. But cr like beta cringe, you know what I'm saying? This is artistic cringe. And that's pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? That's really it. What did I expect? They are men. Have I learned anything great from? I have. I think. Damn, I'd have to go back throughout my life and see what I really be learning from niggas. Let me think. I gotta, I gotta like write a little essay slash paper on that one day just to see. Damn, I don't even know if I have for real. Now I'm about to go on this picnic, irritated and side eye niggas. <laughs> My brother. My oh no 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 no. There's some men, but not too many. I'm talking about me though. Sean is the is Detroit cringe. First of all, you don't have a metric for judging Detroit cringe, so you wouldn't have me on that list because you haven't been here, bitch. That's first and foremost. I'm going to get on here and just start crying in front of y'all and not telling you what the reason is. I just want to see how y'all going to react, you know, on some real shit. But, I mean, that's cool. Is there a way for me to just very quickly?